Another thing you can do, always remember with the beauty of Renko's, you can fine tune your time frame. If you are playing around with the settings and you don't feel quite dialed in, you might be in a time frame where the price action is still a little bit too hyperactive. So you might have to bump up and go to like maybe a three to a four box size. And, and you just kind of make, it's kind of like instrument flying. You don't make big changes when you're in the clouds and you're on descent and you're, you know, heading down towards decision height to decide if you're going to make a land. You can see the runway and make a landing or not. You got to make fine tune, just little fine correction, little fine correction, little fine correction, little fine. You keep dialing in, dialing in, dialing in, and then boom, you know, you, you, you find the kind of the, process that worked over and over for you uh, and that's what it is with trading and the idea isn't oh i'm going to go win every trade and every day i'm going to make 7k on my 50k account if you're doing that you're you're out in la la land it's just go in there get some consistency so you're you know 60 ish you know 60 percent or greater win to loss ratio but you have a really good reward to risk so the average closeout of all your trades, you know, you're up around the two two and change or above reward to risk. Uh, you know, if you, if you're winning like 62 percent of the time, and your average closed out trades are like three to one, I mean, you're you're doing beautiful. So you don't have to be like at 82 percent win to loss ratio. You you might you might get some settings that dial in and and do fantastic. The idea is just to your idea is to be a grinder. Uh, you need to go out and just grind out profits each day, not go in and try to hit home runs. And then once you get some settings where you can be a grinder on a particular instrument or time frame, then you can go look at other instruments and time frames and see if you can find stuff that beats what you're currently doing. And if you can find something that can consistently beat what you're doing, then go trade that live instead, or or trade two instruments live that are your like your strongest uh, settings combinations that you can find. So in the end, trading is just a probabilities game, and it's it's getting stuff dialed in. That's simple. I mean, how how much Q line is a very simple setup. It's an over under trade. Am I above the bands? And do I have a few things in alignment or am I below the bands with a few things in alignment? And in the end, the price tells you where to go. So Q line just follows it. The other good thing about Q line with our adaptive price bands, you can make the bands more, uh, more responsive to price. I mean, you might really want your bands super responsive. Let's go down to a 19 and watch what happens. Watch how they tighten up against price. I'm just saying, on some instruments of time frames, making making it more responsive makes sense, and on other instruments, making it less responsive that ma makes sense. So something like the Nasdaq that has a lot of nice linear moves, you don't need it to be super responsive to price. On something like the ES, you might want to make it a little bit more responsive. The ES tends to grind up and grind down, or something like the bonds, a a a, a more responsive setting on the APB adaptive price bands that are part of our Q line signals indicator might be the way to go. So it's it's all about fine tuning. And one thing we are doing, we're going to get this Q line set up as a strategy. That way you can go back test. We should have already had that done already. I apologize. It's kind of dumb of me. I don't know why I didn't have the programmer do it right away. He's wrapping up some money ball work. Right after that, I'm going to throw him right back in Q-Line and say, hey, make this a strategy. So we'll get that done. Uh, and then we'll also have the money ball as a strategy too. At least, you know, when the diamonds are popping, you can use that, that signal as a strategy and, and uh, take the money ball and make it, you know, as lagged as you want and less responsive. So it's in a trend bias mode, or you can make it hyper responsive to impulse and money ball indicators all about looking and finding impulse moves in price so i have this super sensitive right now and this one i don't and you can see it's the same indicator this is on a trend bias mode where you know long short 
long. And then right at the end of the day, a little bit, it was starting to transition. So, so that's what the money ball is about. It's about reading the impulsiveness and, and, and the, uh, you know, it's, it's not a momentum tool, but it does find the momentum through impulse action and price where price starts hopping around and then moving, getting some direction to it. Okay, I think we covered that enough. So don't forget, you can put a filter on your automated, say, hey, if I have three loses in a row, shut me down, or I have to go in and reauthorize it to keep running. So that way, if it was just some weird event during an unscheduled item that hit the market or maybe a news release you forgot about, no big deal. You can turn it back on and then maybe catch some big moves the rest of the day. Now, me, I like to go in and get done really quick in the first, you know, about two hours. Worst case scenario, the first three hours of the day for my futures trading, just be done. I don't want to sit here and watch this stuff all day long. I want to get in, try to catch about one to two moves, and then I'm done. Now, now the rest of the day, I can just focus on R&D, programming projects, and all of our automated FX trading that we do. Okay, now let's go look at some of the ways that you can potentially build up and trade fully automated with uh, TradingView alerts or strategies. Okay, I've mentioned this before. I want to cover it again. There's pineconnector.com. That will talk out trade activity. So if you have an alert or strategy, we got guys in our group already doing this. It'll, you know, if you're tracking the NQs or the NAS100, but you want to trade, you know, NAS100 on your MT4, MT5, you can take the Q line signals uh, or, you know, whatever signals and then have the trade activity uh, taking place in, on a MT4, MT5 broker platform whether it's a you know, live account, whether it's a demo, whether it's a prop account, doesn't make any difference. Okay, another one I've noticed some guys are using is Capitalize AI. Uh, remember, if it's got the word AI on it, it costs three times more than it normally would. Because that's the new, ooh, trendy thing, AI. I'm just kidding. So you can check that out. I've never used this. I've seen some guys using it. Seems... You know, like it's fairly capable. Let's go to the Discord room for a bit. Let's look at some of the other options that I found that I posted the other day. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, yeah, there was another one there. It was uh, called Trading Code. Let's see that one, just so you're aware of it. So, oh yeah, yeah, this had a list of ways. There we go. What services can automate trading view trading? So if you go to tradingcode.net, there's an article uh, on this. And yeah, three commas I know of. But a lot of guys, I would say the predominance of automated traders on trading view, you know, over the past years have probably been the crypto guys, but I do think that's changing a bit. Uh, more guys are using it to do some futures or FX stuff. So you can go through that list, but yeah, three commas is pretty well known. I know within QuantView, Mike, the owner, and others have used uh, three commas for operating bots. Mike's even done AI bot stuff on crypto. So that's another possibility there. Uh, but yeah, check out that list. And I think it's uh, the title is under tradingcode.net, Programming for Traders. They have an article, you know, just named what services can automate TradingView. And that's a pretty good list. A lot of these names I've never even seen or heard of before. Uh, but you never know. You might find something in there good. Always do your due diligence. Yeah, Trader Post. I'm familiar with that one. Take a look at that. Yeah, Trader's Post. Uh, I've seen that. Let's see, uh, can automate stock options, futures trading strategies for from TradingView or Trade uh, TrendSpider and popular brokers, TradeStation, Alpaca, TD Ameritrade, and so along and so on. So check that out. It looks like MT5, where you know you can talk out trade activity to other uh, items. So yeah, you know. So anyhow, uh, multi-asset class capable. 
looks like Forex is coming soon. Crypto's in beta. They currently have futures and stocks. Uh, we have guys. I know some guys that are using the Moneyball uh, impulse, catching amazing moves on stocks and and the SPY. They're trading SPY. They're trading the QQQs uh, and other things. So you know, there's all kinds of possibilities here. Okay, tradingview.to, have no idea what that is. So, uh, and I thought there was another another good one that I had listed. Let me go find that real quick. Ah, yes, I found it. Automated Brader. So check that out. You know, I have not used this, but, you know, it is a resource. So you can check it out and see, you know, see if that's a viable option. And it does seem to have some, uh, you know, good possibilities. The key is, is uh, you should be able to take, you know, stuff in TradingView, alerts or strategies, and have them, you know, take signals and talk that out to, you know, other platforms. Uh, you can connect Tradeavate to TradingView. So that's important. You know, hopefully, and, and I'm going to be testing this soon. I'm going to try to run the queue line automated with one of these tools and have my trade activity going to my Tradeavate account that has a whole bunch of accounts linked in the Manage Group section. So I'm trying to get some stuff done so I can go to that and really focus on it and get it all vetted out. What's the best? Uh, you know, third-party tool, what's the best way to do it? Okay, here it is. Here's how you hook it all together. Here's how you turn it on and off. And here's me trading the queue line setups live with all of that connected together. And here's my, I, my thoughts on how reliable it is. So it would be really, really nice for TradingView to add some at least basic capability uh, for automation. So until they do, it's third-party tools. Uh, and I'm sure if a person goes and does search on Google, you can probably find many other uh, potential solutions that people are using or, or go on YouTube and search, you know, automated trading and trade view and find some. I, now, I know I've seen some really good, uh, what I would call pretty intense crypto trading, fully automated systems that guys are doing in trading view through third-party tools. So the capabilities there, it's just, you got to kind of build the capability from pieces and components to get it to work. Uh, but there you have it. Wanted to cover, you know, taking a signals based indicator, how to adjust it a bit to dial it in to, uh, you know, have it catch the core uh, structural moves, whether it's a lower time frame. And you can use this stuff for higher time frame trading too. You don't have to trade Q line trades as you know scalping and intraday setups you can go on higher time frames and q line works really really good on higher time frames for what i would call swing trading so there you have it that's that's my entire approach when i'm looking at taking something that's a signal and dialing it in and in in my opinion the less components you tie in the better when it comes to automation, if you add too many filters, uh, sometimes you end up missing the best trades, but yeah, it smooths out your equity curve a little bit, but then now you're missing catching, you know, trades that end up running pretty good and end up being the bulk or what could be the bulk of your profits on a week to week basis. So you don't, you don't want to, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't want to miss out on the big moves. So you don't want to filter something too much. And the idea isn't to be up there with 70 and 80 and 90 percent win to loss ratios. There are some instruments and time frames you might average in the 70 to 80 percent range win to loss ratio some weeks. In other weeks, you might be down around 52. The market changes its behavior a lot. But if you can average out and get around 60 ish percent win to loss ratio with, you know, around a two to one or greater reward to risk you're really going to do well in that grinding mode where you just grind out your, you know, have a daily profit target and go grind out and go get that daily profit target.